Hey, trail crates are over at Go Hunt. Uh, today, I'm gonna run through my postseason bow maintenance. Uh, my season's kind of over for the year. Uh, I was fortunate enough to lug this bow around uh, the tundra of Alaska. Took it on an elk hunt to Idaho, uh, a few days in Montana. Um, you know, filled my caribou permit, had a pretty rough elk hunt. Uh, but I packed this bow around a lot of miles. I saw a lot of wet weather, a lot of snow this year. Seemed like every hunt had some snow. Uh, so I just wanted to run through, this is kind of the time of year where I want to break down my bow. I want to start looking at bow maintenance. So the first thing that I look at when I think about bow maintenance is the string and the cables. Uh, that's the power stroke of the bow. It's the uh, component of the bow and arrow that's going to keep that thing together. Um, you know, if, if you have something go wrong with that, you know, the rest of the, the, the whole thing is completely useless. So you want to make sure that your string, your cables are completely cared for and maintained. You know, one of the first steps I would say is evaluate whether, you know, you need a new set of strings. Um, typically, I replace my strings every year. Uh, I would say if you shoot a lot, especially if you're a shooter every day, um, you ought to look at replacing your strings every year. Um, it may not be the case that you need to replace them, but, you know, things do happen to your strings. They stretch. You may have some serving separate and you know you just want to replace the strings or maybe you just want a set of cool looking new strings but um, yeah i think you got to evaluate your strings uh, and look to see if you need to replace them like i said i try to replace mine every year uh, i've got a set of the matthew zebra strings on this bow um, you know i'm looking at replacing those this year and we'll have another video probably walk through uh, replacing the strings on this bow itself um, if you've looked over your strings, um, like I said, the things that I look for, broken strands, so especially around any points like your peep sight, uh, your, you know, your D-loop, you can wear through or kind of split that serving. You can have wear and tear on the individual strands of your bow string. If you've got a burr or any kind of rough spots on your cam as those cables roll over or those strings roll over, um, you can get some wear and tear on your serving. You could potentially have a cut string. Um, you know, I've seen guys run broadheads across a strand, just barely nip a string and cut a strand or two. But like I said, that's what I would do. First and foremost, I would look over your individual strings, look for cut strands, look for, you know, fuzzy burrs, anything like that that are on your strings. My strings on this bow, as you can see, I mean, they've been pretty well taken care of. I mean, they're, they're in pretty good shape. Um, I've had strings, especially after some rough hunts, antelope hunts, spot and stock, where, you know, your strings get pretty roughed up. Uh, any kind of arid climates, you know, if you're hunting in the desert southwest, if it's Nevada or some of that country for antelope specifically, that dry air can really dry out your strings and they can get really fuzzy. You know, you can bust strands. So, you know, look over your strings, you know, meticulously. Look for broke strands, look for serving separation, look for broke serving. Um, any of that can kind of indicate to you that potentially you need a new string. And then, like I said, strings wear, they stretch, you know, you, you put them through absolute abuse out in the field. So there's a pretty good likelihood that if you haven't changed your strings for a year, 18 months, or you know, two years, I would definitely look at changing your strings. So like I said, you wanna evaluate your strings, look for strands that are broken, especially around your peep sight, your D-loop, your cams. Assuming that your strings are in relatively good condition, um, you can keep shooting them for a while, you decide that you don't need to replace them, um, I would highly suggest you, you know, clean them. So clean them, wax them. So what you're gonna do is just wrap that around, take a piece of dental floss, you know, get a nice seal and just kind of work that down through. As you work that down through, it's going to pull out any excess wax that you might have built up in that string. Um, guys that like to wax their strings a lot, you can get grime and dirt and wax built up in your strings or your cables. A piece of dental floss and just simply working that down the string can tease out a lot of that dirt and grime. Once you've done that, um, you're kind of ready to clean, revitalize, and then wax your string. Um, they make some kits and we actually carry them in the Go Hunt gear shop. If you check the links right here above my head and the left uh, to a couple different products that we have in the shop, we carry both uh, Easton products. Um, this little kit right here, which is the Dr. Doug's Complete Bowstring Maintenance Kit. Uh, this is one of my very favorite little kits. Uh, we also carry the Scorpion Venom. Uh, it's a similar kit. It's also a cleaner, a revitalizer, and then a string wax. Both of those are fantastic products. Um, this is the one that I've been using for several years and it's the one I'm gonna kind of demo today. But we do have that in the Go Hunt gear shop. Uh, if you don't have one of these little kits, it's an excellent ad for you to pick up and do some string maintenance in the off season. 
So the next step, um, I'm going to break out this Dr. Doug's uh, bowstring cleaner, which is the next step. Uh, like I said, it does come with three different uh, little options here. The one is clean, the other one is revitalized, and the last one is a light wax. Uh, the first step is to use the cleaner. So when you get these, it comes in a little tube here. You can hear it's just a, a liquid cleaner in there. It's got an applicator tip on the end. You can see I've been using that one. What you're going to do, it's got instructions on the side of the bottle, is you're just going to work that down through the string uh, with the applicator tip. Um, you're going to let it work into the strings. You're going to let it sit for several minutes, kind of let it work into it, and then you're just going to take a cloth. Um, you've got a, I've just got a cotton cloth here. You know, an old t-shirt will work well as well. And you're just going to wipe off the excess. So this is a very simple process. Uh, I'm just going to run through and just kind of show you how I clean my strings. So as you coat your string, you want to get a good coating on all sides of the string. You know, I just coat the actual string part of it. Um, I don't get it worked into the uh, serving sections of these strings. Um, you can do a little bit. I wouldn't put it onto the serving that goes around your cams. Uh, if you want to do the center serving or, you know, potentially some of the serving that goes into your cables, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I have done that without any issues whatsoever. But primarily the things I'm focused on cleaning are the actual exposed string portions of your actual string and your cable. So I'm just going to continue working that in and I'll let it sit for a few minutes and I'm just going to take a cloth and just wipe that off very gently and I'll, I'll show you how I do that here in a sec. All right, so I've applied the cleaner. I've let it set for a few minutes. Uh, the next step is to just take a clean cloth. This is just this simple, you know, cotton terry cloth towel. Like I said, a t-shirt will do just as fine as well. I'm just going to run that. The uh, string and I'm just going to kind of very lightly wipe it. Um, as I do so, you'll start to see some of that wax come out, you know, some of the dirt and grime that comes out that kind of accumulates and builds up in your bowstrings over a hunting season. So I just kind of wipe that down. I don't have to get too crazy. I don't need to rub it really hard. I just want to simply kind of wipe it down and just wipe down any excess uh, debris and junk that comes up out of your strings as you do so. You can kind of see some of the wax and dirt that's coming up out of that as I wipe it off. Okay, so step number two is to apply the bowstring revitalizer. Uh, if you shoot neon colored strings or brightly colored strings, you know that over time they can fade, color kind of warps out of them. Um, you know, same if you shoot any color bowstring, they can kind of dull out, they fray, and they get really fuzzy. Uh, this revitalizer uh, is great stuff to restore the color of your bowstring. Um, it's also kind of a lubricant and it helps re uh, reduce the friction between strands. Overall, it just extends and maximizes the lifespan of your bowstring. So this revitalizer is great little stuff. Uh, again, you just pop the lid off. It has an applicator tip as well. And all you're going to do is similar to the cleaner is just apply that you don't have to get too crazy. It doesn't have to be real thick, but you just want to apply that to every side of the string. Again, I primarily hit just the exposed string portion of it. I don't go crazy and get it down into the, the uh, serving um, on, on the individual strings or cables. So I'm just going to hit these parts real quick. I'm going to get a nice liberal coating of the revitalizer. And after I've coated it, uh, the key to this stuff is to just let it sit. So you let it sit, you know, give it 15, 20 minutes to fully dry. Um, and then you're just going to go through, similar to the cleaner, and just wipe any excess off of your, your string. So as you apply this revitalizer, you can really start to see the color, you know, come back into your strings. I mean, I just put some under this neon orange uh, cable. You can see that the color is really starting to pop. It really does revitalize and brighten your strings up. And like I said, it helps reduce the friction between strands. This is great stuff. Um, I'm going to give it maybe 15, 20 minutes, let that dry, and I'll be back to wipe off any excess. And then I'm going to run you through step number three, which is to actually apply some bowstring wax. All right, so I've given it about 15 minutes with the step two revitalizer on my string and my cables. Next step is, is to just take the same clean cloth and simply wipe off any excess. Again, you don't have to push into that string. You're just going to run it lightly over it to remove any excess, uh, you know, material or any kind of excess gunk that might be on your string. So you can really see, like if you look at this cable, I don't know if you can get a close-up shot of that, but you can really see how bright uh, these strings are. It really does a nice job of pop, bringing the color pop back into your strings. 
So I'm just going to continue wiping those down real quickly, getting the excess off. And then I'll move on to the last step, which is to apply the actual bowstring wax itself. All right, so the last step is to apply the Dr. Doug's fully synthetic bowstring wax or any, like I said, any wax of your choice. Uh, Scorpion Venom makes a really nice wax. One question I get asked quite a bit is how often should you wax your strings? Um, I'm not a big advocate of, you know, continually waxing your string. I definitely wouldn't advocate waxing your string without also, you know, cleaning and replying, or applying some vitalizer, you know, stripping that old wax out and then, you know, putting the new wax in. Um, I only wax my strings, I would say, maybe three to four times a year. Uh, I definitely don't do it after every time I shoot. I don't think that you need to. I think if you're starting to see some wear and tear on your strings, it's a good opportunity to, um, you know, clean them and re-wax them. And also, like I said, you know, January, it's post-season, it's a great time to do a once-over on your bow. And, you know, string maintenance is a big part of that. So to apply the wax, uh, it's really easy. Just pop the cap. Um, it's kind of just like a chapstick uh, canister. Uh, this is a very fine wax. Uh, I'm just going to simply kind of lay a little bit on there. I don't get too crazy with applying a lot of it. As you kind of apply that to each side, and what I'll do is just kind of run it down the exposed string portions of your strings and cables. Um, all I'm going to do after that is just take my fingers and kind of work that in. And I just work it in very finely. You can use your fingers and get a little bit of friction to work that down into the individual strings and fibers. Um, if you purchase and buy the Scorpion Venom string wax, it will actually come with a little leather strop. You can use that to wrap your string and uh, apply the uh, wax into your string. But it's not rocket science. You're just really going to kind of apply that with your string, get a nice even coating across it, and just make sure that it's worked in. Typically what I'll do is just go through after I've applied it and just kind of work it in with my finger on each individual side of the string until I've got a nice even coating and uh, my strings are looking brand new. You can really see, you know, when you use the full entire system, whether it's the Scorpion Venom or the Dr. Doug's, the Easton uh, kit, it really does restore the life and the look of your string. So it's a, it's a great product. Uh, the next step after I've taken care of my strings, a couple of just simple things that I like to do. Um, one of them is to take a cotton ball or like a cotton swab that I've got here. What I like to do is just run that over my limbs. So as I run that over my limbs, why I'm using that is I'm just simply looking for any kind of splinters. Um, if you have an issue with the limb, if a limb breaks, uh, often it'll splinter and it'll kind of splinter on the edge. Uh, I like to take a cotton ball or like I said, this little cotton swab, and I just kind of like to run that across the edges of my limbs. I just like to check to see if there's any splintering, any kind of cracking or anything that it's existing uh, inside my limbs. Um, I don't feel anything here, but like I said, this is just kind of a precaution just to double check your limbs, make sure that those are good to go. One of the other things that can kind of happen uh, is that you can put dents and dings in your cam. Um, you know, I had a situation this year. I went to on a hunt in Alaska and putting my bow in the plane. Uh, I dinged the bottom part of my cam. You can see I've got a little bit of a, a buffed out spot right there on the bottom part of my cam. It's not uncommon to set your bow down on a rock or you know brush it up against something in the field and you can put a little bit of a ding or a dent in your cam. Over time, as your string is coming back into that string over and over you shoot it, you can actually cause wear and tear on your string. You can separate your serving, you could ultimately cut your string. So I like to run that cotton ball along the cams, you know, just checking again for any kind of rough spots. If you do have a rough spot or a little burr, often it'll leave you know, a little bit of that cotton, which would indicate to you that you've got a burr or an issue with one of your cams. Um, if you do have an issue with one of your cams, let's say you've got a dent or a ding in it. Um, I'm gonna kind of show you, I've got one right here. So right here in this top cam, um, I had a little bit of a, a burr. So what I did is I uh, put my bow in a bow press, um, pressed it, just popped my string off, and then I took a simple piece of sandpaper. You can just get a very, very fine grit sandpaper from your local hardware store. And you can just very lightly brush that burr out of the cam. Uh, the aluminum in these cams, um, you know, you don't need to go whole hog on, you're really buffing that thing out. It's just a very, very light piece of sandpaper. You can just buff out any kind of burr, which is what I did here on the top. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I just buffed out a little bit of a burr that could have potentially caused me wear and tear issues on my string.
Uh, the next step that I like to take, and you know, again, this is you know personal for everybody, whether you want to completely tear down your bow and retune it or not. Um, personally, I do like to tear my bow down. You know, I like to double check my tune. So I'll pull all my accessories off. You know, I'll pull my rest, my sight, my stabilizers. Um, you know, I'll, I'll even replace my D loop typically because it's got a lot of shots on it and wear and tear. Um, you know, I might tie a different knocking, you know, different knocking point if I have to, but I typically pull everything off. Um, and then I start that tuning process again. And again, it's just because I want to go into the spring. I want to go into three D's with, you know, a bow that I know is completely tuned. Things can happen over a season, especially when you're lugging your bow around in the woods, you're carting around in a car. Um, so for me personally, I do like to retune, reset up my bow. Um, so one thing I like to do while I'm doing that is pull off all my accessories. So like I said, pull off my rest. And that gives me a good opportunity to clean uh, my rest. Um, you know, one thing I'm going to point to it here in a sec, you do typically build up rust in any steel bolts that you've got. So if I give you an example right here, you can see my little rest mounting bolt. You can see I've got a little bit of rust built up. And that's just from that bolt getting wet in the field, you know, and drying. So what I'll do is pull that bolt. Uh, I'll use a rust cleaner and a wire brush to simply clean that bolt really good. And then I'll take a Q-tip with a bit of Vaseline and I'll clean that up, you know, clean up all the rust, give it a nice, you know, lubricant and a nice coating to just keep the, uh, the life of that bolt. Uh, and it's not a huge deal. I mean, to a lot of people, maybe this isn't a big deal to me. You know, I put a lot of time and effort into my bow. I just want this thing working completely, you know, peak performance all the time. So as I start to pull my accessories off, one tip that I would like to include is you need to write down, I think this will help you in the retuning process. So, you know, write down the measurements, you know, the marks. So you want to write down your sight mark. Um, you know, for example, my back bar here, I want to write down or take a picture even uh, with your cell phone. That would probably work just as easy. Just take a cell phone picture so that you know that when you set your bow back up, you can set that up identically to the way that you had it. You had it set up, you know, for the season that you, that you liked and that it tuned well. So that's just a tip. Make sure that you have everything that recorded. Um, next step, I'm going to pop off my stabilizer bar here. And like I said, uh, as I do so, I'm going to take a wet washcloth. I'm just going to wipe down the riser. I'm going to take some Q-tips. Uh, again, just get those wet. I'm going to wipe down any nooks and crannies and crevices. Underneath my limbs, I like to clean out the nooks in my cam. Uh, just get any dust and dirt and grime off my bow. And again, it's, it's a tedious thing and some people may not think that you need to do so. Uh, for me, I think it's a, a key component to just making sure that your equipment's in peak performance when you really need it. All right, one thing I like to do uh, in particular when I'm cleaning my bow up uh, I like to pay special attention to my sight, uh, and I like to pull that off completely. Like I said, I like to take a Q-tip and just clean any surfaces, uh, particularly I like to clean the inside of the housing. Uh, I like to pay special attention to the individual pins in your housing. Uh, as you're out hunting, you can see you've got some exposed fibers here on the outside that are in this little plastic tube, but check your individual pins, you know, make sure that everything is tight. That's another great opportunity is to really just take an Allen wrench and just very uh, lightly, you know, test every screw just to make sure that everything is snugged up, tightened, you know, make sure that your site's clean, make sure that your pins are clear, that they're not broken. All right, the last couple of things that I like to take inventory of when I'm checking my archer equipment is my arrows. You wanna make sure that your arrows are in good working order. Typically, I'll flex each individual arrow. You should be doing so as you're practicing throughout the summer and fall just to make sure that there's no fractures. Um, it can be really bad if you shoot an arrow and it breaks um, you know, mid-flight. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys that have stuck arrows in the back of their hand because the shaft is broke mid-shaft uh, during the power strokes. You definitely wanna take inventory of your arrows like I said, I'll flex each individual arrow. I'll check each individual knock. Uh, often I'll replace my knocks, but I really just want to take inventory uh, of each individual arrow that I'm continuing to shoot. And really, you know, flexing that carbon on, on each arrow is something you want to pay special attention to. One final thing that we probably don't talk about too much, um, you know, your release. So I shoot a hinge, a back tension release. A lot of you are shooting thumb button releases or index finger releases. You just want to check those clean those up. Um, you know, if there's parts and pieces that need washed up, um, you know, do so. It's a good time to do that. Um, I can tell you this release here that I've got, if I feel it, I've got just a little bit of a grind in there. So I've probably got some grit and grime built up on the inside of this housing. 
Uh, ultimately, probably what I'll do is pull this whole thing off because I can do that and clean it up. Um, it won't hurt to put a little bit of graphite in there, maybe just to give it some lubrication, but you know, any kind of little hitch or hang up or grind uh, in that can impact your accuracy. It can be a little bit loud. You can feel this one's got a little bit of a click to it when it comes open. So now's the time, January, February, uh, to check over your equipment. You know, we're all dreaming about the tag that we're gonna potentially draw during that draw season. And then hopefully you get a chance to go on the hunt of a lifetime. You know, when you draw that permit, make sure that your equipment is in peak working condition. If you have questions about this or any of the gear that we carry, you know, to help you with your maintenance of your bow, or your rifle, or any other piece of equipment that you might be working on, you know, we've probably got it in the gear shop. And if you got a question, please ask. Um, now's the time, you know, make sure that your gear is properly maintained and taken care of. Mm -hmm.